Hey, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I am super excited because I'm gonna be sharing all of my current beauty favorites with you for 2021. Now we're only about midway through this year, a little over midway, but guys, I have an entire box full of just amazing products that I can't wait to share with you guys. If you all have been here for a little while, you've probably heard me rave about some of these things already. Uh, but, but it's a lot. So this might be, let me just give you like an idea here. I got a whole box full of stuff. Okay. And this is going to be a little bit of a longer video. I have a feeling. So grab a snack or a drink, get comfortable. These are all things that I either discovered this year or I fell in love with this year. So I don't think all of these things necessarily like came out this year, but these are all of the products that I've been hardcore loving on so far this year in 2021. If that sounds interesting to you, please be sure to stick around. But if you're just now making it over here to my channel and you're not yet subscribed, please be sure to tap that subscribe button if you enjoy this content while you're watching. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss future uploads. Let's get into this video. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a collection of things, if you will. It's not going to be any one thing. If you guys have been on my channel since the beginning, and if you have, I'm honored to have you still sticking around. <laughs> Um, I didn't even know what indie brands were when I first started my channel. I had no clue. I just didn't know. I didn't know what was out there. I didn't know the difference. I didn't know the entire world of indie brand makeup even existed. I was very much so drugstore, mainstream, what was hot and in at the time, right? So over like the past year, maybe two years, I've developed this really intense love for indie brand makeup. And this past year in particular... Specifically, the last six months, I've bought a lot of indie brand makeup. So, you're going to see a lot of that in this video today. When I first started my channel back in 2018, I didn't even know what indie makeup was. I, I had no clue what an indie brand was. And I would say over the past year to year and a half, I really dove like head first into the indie beauty world. And it's like once you do that, you, you can't look back. You know what I mean? You, it's just you discover this entire world of beauty and it's just different. It's so different from what you see mainstream and you can't go back from that and you just dig deeper and deeper and you discover more and more. At least that's that's been my journey and I am loving it. So you're going to see a lot of indie products in this video. I've just fallen in love with so many different indie brands and indie products. So anyway, we're going to kick this video off with more or less like a collection of things. It's not any one thing. I have fallen head over heels this year for single shadows, specifically single shadows that sparkle and shine and shift and just catch your eye. Okay. So I've got quite a few, uh, empty palettes that have lots of singles in them. So I'm not going to go through and name out specific single shades that I love. If you guys are interested in hearing that, I can do an updated video like that. I have purchased a lot more single eyeshadows since the last video I did like that. So I'm kind of due for another one. I do have a lot more um, favorites that are different from the video I filmed before. So if you're interested in seeing something like that, let me know down below. I would love to film another video for you guys. So let's just start off. Uh, first and foremost, I got these empty palettes from Colored Rain. They were having a fantastic sale on these things. I think originally these palettes were like $40 a piece. They were buy one, get one free and had a discount on them. So I purchased like five of these suckers and they're, they're just fantastic. But the real stars of the show is what's on the inside. So the entire side over here is all Cleona. Now some of these I owned before this year, but the majority I bought this year over the last like eight months and I love them. God, I love Cleo and eyeshadows so much. And you know what? I've said before, like, I don't see the hype. I hate having to wait for them. Like, they're expensive, and they are expensive. Um, I do hate having to wait for them, but there's hype for a reason because they're so freaking good. And I can say all I want that I, that I, that I don't see it, but I do, okay? Cleo and eyeshadows are fantastic. So I can't remember, like, oh, my God, one of them fell out. <laughs> Look. One of them literally fell out of the pan. Ain't that some shit? Oh no. We have a casualty. Anyway, that's a first. I haven't actually had that happen before. But 
my Cleona shadows, I really love. I've got quite a few of them. I'm probably going to expand on this collection in the future. Um, and then I also have a bunch of Adept Cosmetic Singles, which I also love. Their formula is just a little bit different. It's more putty-like. It's not probably not going to be for everybody, but I think it's beautiful. And then I have some Lethal Singles, Lethal Cosmetics. Those I actually haven't gotten much use out of yet just because I bought so much stuff and I just haven't had the chance to fully form an opinion on those yet. But as far as like Cleona, like I'm like waiting for one more of them to pop out. Cleona I love, Adept I love. This one right here is called Lucid Lavender and it's from Touch of Glam Beauty. And it's stunning. Stunning, beautiful. I don't even know if I can get it to like show you its full beauty, its gorgeousness. It just does so much. It's got lavender and it looks like sea green. I'd probably have to turn the lights down for you and show you like that. That's how a lot of these uh, shadows perform the best. Yeah, you're not going to be able to see it like this, but man, she's pretty. But anyway, that's what I have going on in this palette, but I have more. <laughs> I've kind of gotten into the habit of collecting these kinds of shadows. I just can't help it, guys. They're so freaking pretty. And then all of the ones that you see up here are from Davina. Now, Davina is not a brand that I discovered this year. Um, I started buying her shadows, I believe, last year. Or was it the year before? Might have been the year before that. I can't remember. Um, but Davina was one of the first indie brands that I ever bought from. And as you can tell, I've got... A little bit of a collection going on and I just I love her shadows they're so beautiful she's got a nice little um, assortment of multi chromes right there she's got a lot of the like sparklies the shifties the duo chromes I just love Davina cosmetics so I bought a lot of those this year at the bottom this is an entire brand that I discovered this year that I've been totally obsessed with these are all from Glam Shop. It's a brand that's based out of Poland. I found this brand through Marta's channel. It's called Marta's Makeup. And I'm glad I did because they are such beautiful, stunning single shadows and the formulas are just unique. So, um, of course, I picked up quite a few of those. And then I have one more empty palette that I want to share its contents with you. I would say last year and then the beginning of this year, I fell super hard for Terra Moons Cosmetics. And Terra Moons is this entire top section here, which is quite a bit, to be honest with you. Terra Moons came out with several collections this year, and I just, I, I bought everything they came out with as far as their collections this year because they make such beautifully stunning shadows. I don't think I've tried anything from, from them that I don't like. And I highly recommend, I highly recommend all the brands that I've talked about so far, but Terra Moons just has kind of a sweet spot with me. I don't know what it is about the brand, but every time I wear one of their shadows, I get compliments. Are you motherfucking serious? Did y'all see that? Another shade just popped out and fell on the floor. Like, what is happening? Um, thankfully, it wasn't one of my Terra Moons shade. It was... I believe that was a shade from Kristen Lee. It is. It's called Time Loop. What the hell? How does that happen? Okay, maybe I shouldn't be holding those up for an extended period of time anymore. Let me uh, scoop this off the floor. I'll be right back. Okay, so a couple of other things I wanted to show you in this palette. Well, one other thing. There is a shade from Tracy's Powder Room right here at the bottom. Let me just pull this one out of the palette here. This one's called Crazy Cash, and I've talked about it in a prior video. I haven't used it in a video, but I showed you guys a couple pictures of me wearing this. I wore it when I was at the beach, and I use it in conjunction with the ColourPop High Tide palette. It's their really beautiful, like, new teal colored palette, and it's just such a beautiful shade. It's this really stunning green, and it's shifty. It shifts like a yellow, depending on which way you turn it. Green... Um, but it's just really, it's just really eye-catching, and uh, I kind of live for it. There it is. So, anyway, again, Tracy's Powder Room, Crazy Cash, and then the Terra Moon Shadows that I was showing you. I love them all, and I look forward to collecting more. <laughs> 
because I have problems. Okay, now that we got the single shadows out of the way, let's move into some other makeup products. So these are not gonna be in any particular order. I'm just gonna start pulling stuff out of this box and showing it to you. I am planning on filming a ranking my palettes that I bought so far in 2021 video for you here soon. If you guys are interested in that or excited to see that, let me know down below in the comments section. I think that'll be a fun one because I've bought a lot of eyeshadows this year, even though that was against my low buy rules. Okay, so the next thing that I'm pulling out of here also goes along with some of the stuff I just showed you. Glam Shop, I told you guys that I've discovered that brand this year, and I did buy a couple of palettes from them as well as their singles, and they're just freaking good. Like, I like their shimmer formula better than I like their matte formula, but I was still able to get the, the mattes to work just fine. I created several eye looks with these palettes. If I can, I will try to throw those up on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, this one in particular has this really gorgeous, gorgeous, okay, uh, gorgeous purple holographic shade in the middle. And it's just something like otherworldly. I don't think I'm going to be able to get the, the holographic shift to show up on camera, but it is just beautiful and then with the green palette the camo this one just has a lot it's got a lot going on in here i love the chunkier shadows they're so dimensional they've got it's just i don't know how to explain it they're just gorgeous and i love playing with them they also sell a lot of those shades on their own as singles they're just so sparkly and they're special. Like, look at that. You can't really catch the full, like, wow factor on camera. You just can't. Unless I were to turn down the lighting and tilt my head sideways and, you know, under a full moon. Then you can kind of see how special they are. But in person is when they really shine. That's when you really see just how special these shadows are. They've got duochromes in here, regular satins, of course, the mattes. I just love them. Glam Shop is amazing. If you have not tried them yet, I highly encourage that you do that. They also sell brushes, lipsticks, lip liners. Um, I've tried the lip liners. They're great. Their brushes are great. It's just all around so far. I've had a really great experience with Glam Shop. So wanted to share those with you guys as well. Okay, now we're going to get into one of my favorite makeup steps. You guys probably already know what I'm talking about. Blushes. You want to come in? What do you do, honey? Hi, honey. Hi. You come see me. Hi. You guys want to see my new baby? <laughs> we see the new baby. This is Leo. Le whoa, whoa, whoa. Where are you going, sir? He likes to climb up your ow, head. ow, ow. He's got lots of lots of little sharp nails. Ow. What are you doing? Come here. Hi. What are you doing? No, I don't want you doing that. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> He's got some sharp little claws. This is Leo. He's the new addition to the family. What do you got on your toe, Leo? Hard litter. Ew, dude. What you doing, baby? <laughs> the cutest and most rotten. Him and Zeus are still trying to figure out, you know, trying to figure each other out right now. It's oh, right. boy. He wants to roam. He's got some sharp little nails. Look, look. What are you trying to do, sir? Seriously? That's a long way for him to jump, baby. He's rotten. Oh. Okay. So, this next category is a category that I love, and I've got plenty of, but during this year, I've really tried hard not to buy an excess because I have so much, and I'm talking about blushes. So, the first one that I'm going to be sharing with you guys is Melt's Honey Thief, and this is one of their cream blush lights. Um, so, it is a cream blush. It's not one that I use... A whole hell of a lot just because I do have really oily skin so I try not to use cream products all the time they just don't wear very long but when I do use this I absolutely love it because it's beautiful it's this really gorgeous like pinky kind of peachy shade actually this would have gone really well with what I'm wearing today I probably should have wore this today but uh, nonetheless it's really beautiful Let's see if I can get a swatch here Really beautiful cream blush, and I love it. The next blush is also a cream product, but this one is a much different formula from the Melch. Melch? <laughs> it's a much different formula from the Melt blush that I just shared with you. This is from LYS, and it's their, let's see, Higher Standard Satin Matte Cream Blush in the shade Inspire. 
And if you guys know me, then you know I grabbed one of the brighter shades because I love a good bright, I just love good bright blushes. So this one is more of that deeper kind of, I don't really want to say terracotta, but kind of a little bit more pinky uh, than terracotta, but it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous blush shade. You got to be real careful with this one because it gets out of hand real friggin quick. So the way I like to apply this one, actually, I like to apply this one and the Melt Blush with a dry beauty blender. And I feel like doing that, I'm just able to keep it a little bit more subdued. I feel like if I go in with a brush with this, I'm going to have clown cheeks within like 0.5 seconds. So unless that's the look I'm going for that day, I just use a dry beauty blender. So anyway, I really love this one. It wears really nicely on my skin. Neither one of these enhance texture for me. They don't enhance my pores. Um, they, they both work really well with powders over top, which is typically how I wear my cream products. So the LYS blush is also a favorite. Okay, and the next products that I'm going to share with you that are blushes are the Rouge Romance um, blush palettes from Jaclyn Cosmetics. And I have Rouge Affair and Rouge Romance. This one is Rouge Romance, and it's their more warm-toned, ready, orangey type of blush palette, and I love it. I love these tones. It wears really nicely. I don't have to worry about it being patchy or wearing off too quickly throughout the day. It's just really nice formula, really beautiful blush selection, and I love both palettes. And then, of course, Rouge Affair is their more cool tone palette. Um, same thing. Wears really beautifully. I love the color selection. I feel like there's enough variation between both palettes. Uh, obviously, up and aside from the fact that one is warm and one is cool, but there's a lot of variation between shades. So originally when I bought the palette, I was only going to buy one. I was going to grab the warm toned one, but I just couldn't help myself. These were well worth um, the money that I paid for them. I have gotten quite a bit of use out of them, and it's these are tones that I'll wear to work every day, which I know is crazy because, you know, they're a little bit loud, but not all of them. Like this one's really neutral. This one, actually this one down here is not too bad. The other ones are a little bit bright, but I'll still wear them to work. I don't really let that kind of stuff stop me. Um, and then this one, again, we got a lot of neutral shades um, and some brighter shades. They're just fun. They're fun. The variety, the quality, I just love them. Okay, enough rambling about the blush palettes. Let's move on. Okay, next up, I do have a couple of face powders that I want to share with you. The first one is not a newer product, but it took me quite a while to jump on this train. Uh, this is the number seven Lift and Luminate powder. I have mine in the shade Light. And this is actually the finishing powder that I used today after I set my face with the Huda Beauty setting powder. This was kind of like the powder that I went over after the fact, and it just adds this really beautiful kind of soft focus filtered effect to your skin. I really love this. I think it is such a great product. It reminds me a lot of the Charlotte Tilbury powder. You're probably going to hear other people say that, or maybe you've already heard people say that. So I didn't discover that. Actually, that's why I bought this because the Charlotte Tilbury powder is hella expensive. Um, this is a very affordable dupe. Actually, I might even like this one a little bit better. It's just very smoothing and perfecting. I love this powder. So you can't beat that when you find a drugstore product that mimics a higher end product or even does it a little bit better. And you're paying obviously a lower price point. So that's become a quick favorite. And then I also grabbed the Dior Forever Face and Body Powder No Powder. And this one, again, in my opinion, is more like a finishing powder. It's got that really beautiful blurred soft focus effect. It's really smooth. It's kind of got that, what kind of formula is that? It's not really like your typical powder. It's not hard pressed or chalky. It's more smooth feeling, but it's also kind of, I don't want to say wet because it's not wet. I don't know how to describe this. Um, I guess that's why, why they call it powder, no powder. It's just a really beautiful formula and it works very well and I love it. So I kind of hit the jackpot with powders this year. Obviously this is your higher end option. It's going to cost you a lot more money. This is, I don't want to call it lower end, but it's more affordable. Um, but if I'm being completely honest, if I had to grab through and pick just one, I would probably go with the number seven powder. So 
Love those either way. Wanted to share them both with you in this video. I hope I'm not looking too crazy. You know, I went very loud with the color today. I wanted to be colorful. Haven't played with makeup in a few days. And I'm living for the eye look, but the lips, they're kind of killing me a little bit. So I hope I'm not throwing you guys off too bad. I just thought, you know what? I was watching one of my good friends, Millie, um, Bad to the Brow. Uh, she did a video. What was she doing? I think it was her Unpopular Opinions and she was talking about how I guess people don't like like loud colored lips with the loud eye looks. And she was like, oh, I love those. So do I. <laughs> and it kind of inspired me to do this today. So thanks, Millie. Okay, let's move on now to, should we do eyeshadow palettes now? Because I have quite a few. Let's do it. Let's toss these in here. Yeah, I have more than I thought I did. So this has definitely been a year for eyeshadow palettes for me. Not only has there been so many amazing palette releases this year, but I've had zero self-control when it comes to purchasing palettes, and I've bought a lot. So I didn't want to get on here and share with you guys all of the palettes I bought this year, because I am going to do that again in a separate video where I rank those, but I wanted to pick the palettes that I'm most impressed by, the ones that I reach for the most, the ones that I've had the most fun playing with, those palettes. Those are the ones that I want to share with you today. Okay, first up, this one is kind of... This one kind of shocks me a little bit that I like it as much as I do. This is the Natasha Denona Mini Zendo Palette. And I honestly, like, I wanted this for a really long time. And, you know, I kind of held off. I didn't buy it at first, obviously, because I just bought it a couple months ago. But I finally caved. I think I got this when Sephora did their big sale. And the first look I did with it, I was kind of like, oh, like, okay. And then I did a couple more looks with it, and I just really, really enjoy this color combination. It's something about the gray and the pink, and then you've got this really deep kind of purpley tone out here. I don't know, but I love these tones together. And all of the eye looks that I've created with this, I've really enjoyed. It's just simple. It's a five pan palette. So of course you're not gonna be able to get endless amount of looks with this, but the looks that I get with it, I really enjoy. So I wanted to share this with you guys. I'll be honest with you, the Midi Zendo that I bought, I feel like that doesn't even represent this palette at all. Like this does not look like it sparked the idea for that bigger palette whatsoever. I don't understand it. I wish the bigger palette would have been more toned like this. It would have been more pinky, grayish, purpley toned. But anyway. I digress. I love the mini Zendo. Um, keeping it with the Natasha Denona theme, I also picked up her Sunrise palette. I was very late to the party on this one, but I do not regret it one single bit. I love her matte formula, and the mattes in here are just, they're just stunning. They're amazing. As far as the showers are concerned, they're good. I don't want to say that they're not good. They are good. They just don't knock my socks off because I'm so used to my higher standard because of all these beautiful indie singles that I have, but I just have to remind myself that's not what this is. That's not what these shades were intended to be. So I do really love this palette. I think that I've created some really gorgeous looks with it. Again, if I remember, I'll try to throw those up for you so you all can see them at least one or two looks. Um, I really love this. And I do not regret buying this at all. Okay, the next palette that I wanna share with you is from Kaleidos, and this is their Flower Punk. It's really funny because this, when I first initially saw this palette, I was not impressed. I didn't really want anything to do with it. I didn't think that the color story made a lot of sense. I just, first of all, let's just back it up, okay? Look at the packaging on this palette. It's something totally unique. The top comes completely off, okay? So that in and of itself really draw, drew my attention. But when I first initially saw this color story, I just wasn't impressed. I didn't think it made a lot of sense. I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to create cohesive eye looks with this. But the more I looked at it, the more I saw other people talking about it. Um, did I buy this right away? I can't remember. I don't know if I saw people using this and that's what pushed me in that direction. Honestly, I don't remember. Something made me buy this. It was probably one of my fellow beauty creators. Um, but I really, really love this palette. Not only does it have amazing quality, both with the mattes and the shimmers, you really can create some cohesive looks with this. Now, the way I typically wear this is a little bit more 
monochromatic. I don't I don't typically mix like the pink and the greens just because look, I'm a little I don't know, a little um delayed when it comes to I'm just not as good with mixing the color combination. So mixing like the, the pink and the green, it would probably look like a hot wreck on my eyes, okay? But mixing these greens or even that green with these, whatever, keeping it monochromatic with the pinks, which I've done before, I really do like this palette a whole heck of a lot. I haven't used it um, to its full potential yet just because I bought way too many palettes this year, but I do really love it nonetheless, and I wanted to share it with you. This is the It's Bell Break the Rules palette, and this is what you see. Well, the sparkle on my lids is from this palette. It's actually the shade right here. It's called Stay Radical, and it's this really beautiful bright orange shade, and it shifts green, and it's just something next level stunning. <laughs> it's so beautiful. And that's what I have all over the lids. On top of another shade, I didn't put down a matte first. I've only got two shades on the lids. I've got this really beautiful, bright, kind of neon orangey pink shade. And then I threw Stay Radical right on top of it. And I love it. I love this eye look. Um, but anyway, the Break the Rules palette is more of a shimmer palette. Well, not more of a shimmer palette. That's all it is, is a shimmer palette. But the shimmers are very sheer. They're all, they're more or less like topper shades, except for this one's not so much a topper shade. It's a really stunning shimmery green. Um, actually, the red is also not see-through. But most of the shades in this palette are toppers. They're sparkly. They are very smooth. Um, and they're beautiful. This is a very stunning palette. For the longest time, when I first saw people buying this and hyping it up, I kept thinking, okay, it's their sheer shimmers, like big deal. But I love it. <laughs> I love it, and I'm glad I picked it up. So I wanted to share it with you guys. Okay, the next two things I'm sharing with you are from Adept Cosmetics. This is the Plain Jane palette, and that's what she looks like. And these shades remind me very much so of the types of shades that you're going to find in the It's Bell Break the Rules palette. They're very sheer, shimmery, eye-catching, sparkly. Actually, some of the shades are look like dupes. Um, this is a dupe for one of the shades in the It's Bell palette. I love using these to amp up just a regular run-of-the-mill eye look, and that's what these palettes are really good for. The other one is the Ninhydrin from Adept Cosmetics. Same thing. You've got a lot of beautiful shimmery shades in here, most of which are toppers. Um, they're just stunning. They sparkle and shine, and they grab your attention, and those are the kind of shades that I really love. So had to share those as well. This next one kind of snuck up on me a little bit. I don't know why I all of a sudden had this interest for this palette. It's not new. It's been out for quite a while now, and I've seen other people use it, and I really wasn't all that intrigued, like, when it first came out. I thought it was pretty, but I didn't really have this, like, burning desire to go grab it, right? But then I kept seeing it, or I kept... I don't know. I, don't, I honestly don't know what turned me on to this. This is the Juvia's Place Nubian 3, their coral palette. And it's something about this color story. Actually, it kind of reminds me of the mini Zendo. When you kind of look at the color story with the pink and the orangey pink and then the, the deep purple or whatever, I just feel like these tones play so nicely with each other. Um, if I can remember, I will throw a picture up on the screen because I did take some pictures wearing this. But this is such a beautiful palette. And Juvia's Place was having this crazy amazing sale not too long ago. So I snatched it up and I've used it a handful of times. Which the fact that I'm using any palette a handful of times right now given how many palettes I bought should tell you something. So I really love that one. Okay, I have two more palettes that I want to share with you guys. This next one, I did a full review or first impression here on my channel. I did three different eye looks with it. And I've worn it numerous times since. This is the ABH Norvina Volume Number 5. And it is definitely my favorite one out of that collection. It is the most purple toned palette out of the five. And it's just better quality in my opinion. Um, from what I understand, they did do a different shimmer quality. Or a different shimmer formula rather. And you can tell because it's just a lot better. So I love the tones in here. It's a very cohesive color story. It's easy for me to see eye looks when I look at this. 
Um, I love the shimmers that they put in here. They're really beautiful. The formula is really nice. Um, no formula issues. I don't have any issues with patchiness, blending, whatever. It's just a really beautiful palette, and I think they knocked it out of the park with this one. So, again, I've been using it a lot so far this year, and I'm sure I'll get even more use out of it. So I had to share that. Again, one more palette that I want to share with you guys. This is the Michaela and Glam Light palette. So Michaela is a huge TikTok personality that does makeup looks, mainly eye looks. Well, eh, that's a lot. She does full face, um, but she's very well known for her colorful um, eye looks. So this is the collab she did with Glam Light, and it's just really, really nice. Now I do have other palettes from Glam Light. And this is definitely a step up as far as quality is concerned. So I have created quite a few eye looks with this. I've loved pretty much every look that I've created, you know, aside from the fact that sometimes I get carried away and the eye look just looks a little bit crazy. Um, but as far as the quality is concerned and the formulas, this is just such a beautiful palette. The shimmers are very shimmery and just sparkly and eye-catching. I actually took the shade Stunning right here, this really gorgeous green, and that's what I used to tap on that lower lash line. I just, I love the shimmers in here. The mattes in here are just better than their original formula. They blend better. They're more pigmented. I feel like in prior Glam Light palettes, the mattes were a little bit more thin, that you had to kind of build them up a little bit to get some real payoff from them. These are not like that. They're very pigmented, just easy to work with. I love this palette. So those were all of the palettes that I wanted to share with you guys so far from this year, you know, being my favorites. Let's move into fragrances. Okay, so I have two perfumes that I wanna share with you guys that I've really fallen in love with this year. The first one is from Valentino, and this one is called Donna Born in Roma. And this is just a little purse spray that I bought. I really like to, to start out with travel size, purse sprays, something a little bit smaller before I go in for the kill and get the large bottle. Um, I believe I started this off with a tiny sample bottle. I have an entire section in my vanity drawer that is just full of perfume samples. Anytime I order from Ulta, Sephora, um, other companies that have perfume samples or perfumes that they sell, I end up getting a lot of the little samples. So I've kind of hoarded them, collected them. And every once in a while, I'll dip in there and I'll try something new. And when I tried this one, I instantly fell in love with it. And I don't know how to explain the scent. It's very unique. It's definitely got like this kind of vanilla scent to it, but it's florally at the same time. It's very distinct. And to be honest with you, it's not one that I fell in love with right away when I smelled it. It took a little bit of time, but I really do love this one. So I wanted to share it with you guys. And then the other scent that I picked up, if you guys heard me talk about this in a recent video, you already know which one I'm going to share with you. This is the Tom Ford Oud Wood. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not 100% sure. It's a little fancy. Again, it's got that vanilla kind of undertone, and I think... I don't know. I don't know how to describe scents. I'm terrible at it. But again, it's a little purse spray. It's got a fancy little, you know, container here for it. But that's what it looks like on the inside. And it is stupid expensive. So I was not about to buy the full size, but I love this so much. This is more of a masculine fragrance. It's not feminine whatsoever which kind of shocks me that I like it as much as I do and shocks me even more that I bought it to wear personally. But again, this was something that I had a little tiny sample of. I was actually in the middle of filming a video when I went over and just sprayed something on just for fun, you know, trying something out. And I instantly fell in love with this scent. I really like it. I think it smells delicious. So I had to share that with you guys as well. Okay, folks, we are not done. We have quite a few things still left in this box. So I'm just going to pull it right on in front of me here and we're going to start digging through this okay the next thing that i'm sharing with you is from belief this is a moisturizer why did i say that so weird this is the aqua bomb brightening vitamin c cream and the reason why i love this one is because it's very rich it's it's more i would wear this more so at nighttime i wouldn't wear this during the day just because i do have really oily skin again i bought this when sephora had their sale 
um, because I'd also picked up the original Aqua Bomb. It's what I use during the daytime. But I love using this one on top of my Curology at nighttime before I go to bed. And when I wake up in the morning, my skin is just so soft and supple. And I just love this. I love this for a nighttime moisturizer. So I had to share it with you guys. Okay, one more skincare product, I believe. This is the Dr. Dennis Gross Extra Strength Daily Peel. I've been using this consistently, maybe even before the start of the year. Honestly, I can't remember. But these pads are life-changing. They will completely... I don't want to say that they're going to transform your skin because, of course, you know every kind of skincare product is going to react differently on everybody. So I don't want to make that claim. But I know what this has been doing for my skin, and it completely smooths my skin. It's one of those products that if I know that I, I want to have a good makeup day, if I want a, my makeup to look more seamless, more skin-like, more flawless, then I'll use this ahead of time. I just, the radiance that it gives your skin, the clarity, the smoothness, this is just such a fantastic skincare product. It's very pricey. It's $80 for a box of 30, which means a 30 day supply a month is going to cost you $80. Um, what I typically do is do every other day or every couple days here lately. I've been doing every day <laughs> just because after a while your skin's going to build up kind of this tolerance to it. So you don't really get the effects that you would when you first started using it off of doing it every other day or every couple days. So I have been doing this pretty much every day now. And it's just, again, a fantastic product. So I swear by those. If you've thought about buying them before, but you're kind of on the fence, those are the real deal. Okay, I have one more product in here that is not makeup. The rest is, so let's do that one next. This is the Kerastase or Kerastase Nutritive Nectar. What is this? Nutritive. Okay, this is supposed to be like a heat protectant type of product, but it also makes your hair super soft shiny, manageable. It smells so good. I mean, I love this. This was actually something that I got with my Sephora points. And this is huge. Like, what, did I get it with points? Or I might have even typed in a code to get this, but that's how I got it. it was either with points or a code. And this mug is huge. This is a full fluid ounce. And I've been using this every single time I wash my hair, which is twice a week. I don't overwash. Um, but I've been using this for a couple of months now, and I absolutely love it. I can most certainly tell when I don't use this. My hair is just not as soft. It doesn't smell as nice. It's not as just shiny and smooth. Like, this is an incredible product. I already purchased another bottle of it because I'm getting really low on this one. I love it. It's kind of like a leave-in conditioner, I guess, but it's also a heat protectant. Anyway, I've had my makeup on for a long time today. I think I started my makeup at like 10, and it's probably 8 o'clock now. Yep, 8 o'clock on the dot. I just sat here and talked about probably half of what I have left and realized I wasn't filming. So, <laughs> let's do this again. The lips are looking hella crazy, y'all. Don't judge me. I'm just not... I don't really give a shit. I just kind of want to get through this now. Okay, so I have one highlighter I want to... I have one highlighter I want to share with you guys. I have so many highlighters in my collection already. I just kind of pumped the brakes like hardcore on buying highlighters this year. So I don't think that I've even really bought that many. I've maybe bought... Is this the only one? Honestly, I don't remember, but I haven't bought that many at all because, again, I have too many to begin with. So, and it's shiny powder. The highlighter I want to share with you guys right now is from Anastasia Beverly Hills, and this is their Iced Out Highlighter. So, this kind of reminds me, uh, well, the packaging-wise, the way it looks, um, of the Amrezy Highlighter. Um, and I do have Amrezy, and I love that highlighter. It just, it's such a beautiful tone, and it works on a lot of different skin tones, mine included, but this one is more like yellow toned. Amrezy is a gold toned highlighter, um, and this one is just more like a yellowy kind of gold. I don't know how to describe it, or like an icy yellow. I don't know. It's stunning, though. I really love this. I've used it a ton, so I wanted to share it with you guys because I did pick it up this year, and it's become kind of a staple in my makeup routine. Okay, I have a slew of bronzers that I want to share with you guys tonight. 
and one of them you can't actually buy anymore, so I'm going to apologize in advance, but I wanted to share it with you all because I did discover it this year, and actually I went out of my way to buy it from Mercari off of somebody selling it because you can't buy it anymore. So this is the Balms Take Home the Bronze in the shade Oliver. This was a very, very popular bronzer several years ago, probably like four years ago, to be honest with you. And I don't know why they discontinued this, or maybe they turned it into another product. Honestly, I don't know. I looked, okay? I did a lot of research on this stupid little bronzer, and I couldn't figure out what they did. So I just finally gave up. But it's the perfect bronzer shade. It is not orange. Um, it looks beautiful on my skin tone. And because I loved, I actually got this one from an Ipsy bag and they offered this as an add-on the next month for Ipsy. So I, I actually went on there and purchased another sample size. And then crazy me, like in the early hours of the morning when I go nuts and I buy makeup, I actually got on Mercari and bought another sample that somebody was selling that they had gotten from Ipsy. So I have three of these little sample sizes. That should last me quite a while. When I run out, it is what it is. I have plenty of bronzers. I really didn't need to do all that. Um, but, you know, welcome to my brain. Uh, the next one I want to share with you guys is from number seven, and this is their Golden Sand Bronzer. So if you're looking for something that is more drugstore, something more affordable, more drugstore? What does that even mean? If you're looking for something from the drugstore that's more affordable, that's neutral, it doesn't pull to orange, actually, it's kind of got, I don't know if I want to say like a pink undertone, but almost, it's it's a very unique tone, this one is. It's not like anything that I own because it is still warm, but it's not orange. And I really like this one. So if you're looking for a good bronzer, you're maybe around my skin tone and you don't want to pay an arm and a leg for like a, you know, a higher end bronzer, check this one out. It's really nice. And again, this one is in the shade Golden Sand. Okay, this next bronzer is from Huda Beauty. This is their... Uh, Soft Radiance Bronzing Powder in the shade Light. It's from their Glowish line or launch. Glowish isn't like a whole brand, is it? I don't think it is. Anyway, this is the perfect bronzer shade for me. I have been using this every single day. Ever since I purchased this, I've used it every day before going to work. So I love it. It blends beautifully. It's just, it looks amazing sitting on the skin. It's actually what I'm wearing for my bronzer today. And you kind of can't see it because I went I went ham with the blush on top and then, of course, with the um, highlight. But it's a stunning bronzer shade, and I love it. It's kind of got the same consistency of powder as the Dior No Powder Powder. It's more of like a, I don't know if it's a gelée formula or what this is, but it's not your typical, like, powder formula. It's very creamy feeling. Um... I don't want to, it doesn't feel wet, but it almost does. I don't know how to describe it, but I love this. And then last but not least of the bronzers is the NARS Laguna Sunkissed Bronzing Cream. So this was one that I kind of hesitated to buy at first, but then I heard a couple people talking about it and I thought, you know what? I'm just going to get it. I know that I don't use a whole lot of cream products, but I've been kind of on that cream kick here lately because I've kind of learned, this is just a little side note, for somebody like me that has really oily skin, I like to layer makeup products. I like to start off with a very matte base, move into like foundations that are maybe mixed. I've got a little bit of matte, a little bit of luminous, and then I'll layer on top of that with cream blush, cream um, bronzer, and then I go with my setting powder, and then I do my cream or my powder blushes and my powder bronzers. I like to layer. It makes my makeup last a lot longer. Yes, it can get very out of control if I'm not careful, so I have to do thin, light layers. Um, but in saying all that, that is how I love to use this product. I like to use this as my base before I put on the powder, before I put on another bronzer, and it's just beautiful. Again, has a really nice tone to it. It's super creamy and blendable, and it's just a really good product. So you can just see it's not too orange. It is warm. Um, but it doesn't, you're, you're not gonna look like an Oompa Loompa wearing this. So that's why I love it. And it does have like a, it does have a nice little faint scent to it. It's not overpowering. Um, I feel like if you're sensitive to scents, this would still be okay for you. It's not going to be like, um, Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer or anything like that, but there is a very slight scent to it. Okay. Last but not least of the bronzer-ish type of products 
This is the Hollywood Contour Wand in the shade Fair to Medium. Now, this is a product that I tried very hard to get for like a year. You couldn't find it anywhere because it was sold out. This is such a hyped up product and for very good reason. I actually found this by scrolling through Instagram. It popped up as an ad and it said Hollywood Contour Wand and it said shade Fair to Medium you know, whatever, whatever. It was an ad for this product. And I thought they've got to, they've got to be confused. That thing's not available. I've been looking like every weekend. I can't find it. So I went on the website and sure enough, it was available. So I bought it real quick and I have been using the absolute shit out of this product since I got it. It is such a good contour. This can double as a bronzer. It's got this really beautiful, not just like a, like a brown, how do I want to describe this? It has kind of like a ready undertone to it. So when you put it on, not only does it deepen up the perimeter of your face and, and the contours of your face, but it pulls this warmth to that area as well. So it can kind of double as both a bronzer and a contour. And I love that about this. So this is actually what I have on the perimeter of my face today. And it's not overpowering. It's not, doesn't look like I have helmet head. Although, you know, if I go overboard, I definitely could but it just looks so nice. I did the cheekbones with it. I did the jawline and the neck. I love this product. So after I bought this, I kind of went back on just to see if I could get it again. Just, you know, wondering how lucky I got and it was sold out. So I feel like it sold out pretty quick. And then lo and behold, I was scrolling Instagram again a couple days ago and again, it popped up as an ad. So I went on, I saw that it was available and I bought it again. <laughs> Now, this is not a cheap product. This is actually very expensive. So I probably should have just held off on that. But it, again, it's a very difficult product to get a hold of. And I didn't want to be, be without it in the case that I ran out of this. So I know that's stupid to buy backup products when, you know, I'm probably not even halfway through this one yet. But I did it. And I'm telling you that I did it because that's how much I love this product. I don't mean to rub it in if you can't get a hold of it, but it's it's worth it. Let's share some things that I really didn't think were going to become favorites. Now, when it comes to mascaras, I have an entire drawer full of samples, full of full-size mascaras. Some I've never touched, some I've used once or twice, but if I went in there and I counted every single mascara that I have, it would probably be upwards of like 70 to 80 mascaras, which is completely crazy and I, I know it is, okay? So the fact that I have three that I want to share with you that I've been very impressed by and I've used a ton is actually really unusual for me because I don't really fall, I don't really f usually fall that easily for mascaras. I'm kind of like, nah, it's okay. Or I might get stuck on one and I'm stuck on it for a long time. For the longest time I was stuck on Benefit Roller Lash and then when the one that I have in there started to dry out a little bit, I started to venture outside and try different things. So the first one that I'm going to share with you is the Maybelline Sky High Mascara. Okay, so the Maybelline Sky High Mascara is something that kind of took me by surprise. This was one of those viral TikTok products. Everybody was raving about this. So, of course, everybody went out and bought it, me included, even though I'm not really on TikTok like that. I heard about the fact that it was <laughs> viral on TikTok and that's what made me buy it. Marketing at its finest, right? Um, and what's really funny about this is it doesn't have the kind of wand that I even typically go for. It's got a very kind of thin, like rubbery, weird wand on it. But the formula on this is really, really nice. So when I bought this, I tried it. The very first time I tried it, I feel like I liked it, but I wasn't 100% sold on it. But the more I used it, the more I liked it. And I did use this a lot. Um, typically, I would wear this before going to work. It does a great job at lengthening, separating, uh, making them really dark, you know, kind of giving you some, uh, some wow factor. I really like this mascara. The next mascara I'm sharing with you is from Tarte. This is their Man Eater. And this is another one of those products where it took me by surprise. I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I do. Uh, again, the wand is just not the typical kind of wand that I like. And it kind of reminds me of the other one, except for this one is not tapered. It's just very, it's uh, the same size all the way across here, but it's got the same kind of like rubbery little spikes on it, but the for it must be the formula. I don't know. Or maybe it's the wand. Who knows? I love the Tarte Maneater. It's such a fantastic uh, mascara. I used this a lot. 
So between the two, I probably used this for about three months. I probably used the other one for about three months. And then I can't remember who I was watching on YouTube, but somebody was testing out the new MAC Magic Extension Mascara. And whoever it was tried this out and their lashes looked incredible. And I kept thinking, there's no damn way they look that good. So, of course, I had to find out for myself. So, I purchased this off of Ulta, I believe. And I really do like this. Now, the weird thing is, I used it today. And I feel like I didn't get quite as much drama as what I typically do with it. I don't know if it's because I've had it open for like two weeks now. So, the formula's changing a little bit. Um, it's drying a little bit compared to what it was like. But it does have very long extensions in it. Um, I think they do a really great job gripping onto your lashes, making your lashes look longer, um, fuller, just the whole nine yards. This is a really, really great mascara, and I've been using this every day since I bought it, so I love it. Okay, we've got a handful of products left in here, probably like 10, so let's get through this really quickly. I know this is going to be a doozy of a video. Again, I have found so many amazing products so far this year. When you first really get involved with makeup, when you first really start to, to figure out like what your style is, what kind of makeup you really like, you're kind of willing to buy just about anything, or at least I was. I bought all kinds of shit. Like if it looked any bit of interesting, I bought it. But now, because I know the kind of products that I like, like I really know, I don't buy a whole lot of stuff that I dislike anymore, which is a good thing, but it's also a bad thing because I buy a lot of shit. Um, but at least I'm buying stuff that I know that I'm going to like. I don't buy things thinking, do I like glowy things? Do I like blush? <laughs> do I like single shadows? Like, I know what I like now. So, again, a lot of the stuff I buy, I really enjoy. Um, and I feel like my favorites videos are just evidence of that. Because as time has progressed, I have more and more to share with you guys. Because I'm more accurate in what I'm purchasing and what I'm liking. Okay. I have a couple of complexion products in here. This is another thing. I have like 70, well, maybe not that many now because I decluttered some, but I have at least 60, if not 70, uh, foundations sitting over here, which is bananas. Okay, I get it. Um, so I don't really buy that many foundations anymore. It really takes something super special to catch my eye. But here lately, it's been all about the natural, the makeup, no makeup kind of look, the more dewy, healthy kind of look, which is hard for me to pull off because I am so oily. Um, you can tell right now, like, well, for one, I'm sweating, uh, because it's very hot in here, but typically I can't wear those types of products. They don't wear long on my skin. Um, but I did pick up the Fenty Beauty Ease Drop, what is this, skin tint? Blurring skin tint. This is something that I throw on when I'm, like, running out the door, I'm going to the grocery store, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time doing a full face. So I throw this on, I just rub it in with my fingers really quickly, I might powder over top, and that's it. I don't do anything else with it. I don't put anything else on top of it, and it works really well for that purpose. Now, if I'm going for like a full coverage beat, if I'm looking for something that's going to last me all day, this is not it. Um, so I have a very specific use for this, but for that very specific use, this works very well. So I wanted to share it with you guys for that reason. I think it's a fantastic product. The next complexion product that I want to share with you is the Glowish Skin Tint from Huda Beauty. Now, this is another one that I have a very specific use for this. I can't use this on its own. So if you guys saw my first impression of this product, I did a video a couple videos ago where I tried out this and the bronzer and some other things. And I looked like the greasiest glowy disco ball you'd ever seen. And it wasn't flattering in my opinion. Um, not until I powdered at least. After I powdered, it wasn't too bad. But this will not wear long on me if I wear it in that way. And if I don't powder at all, it's gonna slide off my face probably within an hour or two. So the way I like to use this is mixing it in with my Estee Lauder Double Wear or other very matte foundations because it brings back a little bit of that life to it. It brings back a little bit of that luminosity and it makes it look like my skin isn't so dry and just like heavy and matte. So that's what I like to use this for and it's very fantastic using it in that way. But yeah, on its own, absolutely not. But I love wearing it as a mixer. I totally underestimated how long it was going to take me to talk about all this stuff. This is kind of crazy. It's kind of ridiculous. Oh, it's so hot in here. Okay, a couple more products. We've got some lips. Let's do that next. Let's do lip products. I've got two. 
The first one is a little sample that I got. I think I got it this year, but it's very possible I got it last year, but I've been using it a lot and it's probably about halfway gone. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Rose Jewel Lip Gloss. And it's just really beautiful. It's just a little, again, little tiny sample size. But I love it. So I'll see if I can just do a little swatcheroo on the back of my hand. I've got like all kinds of product on the back of my hand. It's kind of gross, actually. Um, this one has little tiny gold like flecks in it. Oh, look how pretty that is, though. It's very wet looking and juicy. And it looks really nice on the lips. So that's why I like this one. And it's not too overly sticky. Like, it's definitely a little bit sticky. A little bit. But it's not, like, so sticky that we're, when you do like that, it feels gross. I really like this. It wears nicely. And it just looks gorgeous. And, again, that shade was Rose Jewel. And then, last but not least, this product really caught me by surprise. It came out of left field. I got it in an Ipsy bag, I believe. This is from Seraphine Botanicals, and it's their Berry and Juice Vegan Lip Gel. Um, I'm just going to keep it 100 with you guys. When I get stuff from my Ipsy bag, more often than not, like, it's nice. Like, it's like, oh, okay, that was nice to try. But I don't typically find things that I feel like I need to go out and purchase the full size of or feel like I found a Holy Grail product. That doesn't happen all that often. And it's probably just because I've tried so many different products it's hard for me to find something that either I haven't tried before or that's so unique or so different that I feel like, you know, I need to have or whatever. So the fact that I instantly fell in love with this the first time I used it was a little shocking to me. This is such an amazing, it's called a lip gel. It is just such a good product. It's kind of like a lip gloss between a lip gloss and a lip oil. Um, there it is right here. It's super shiny, it's juicy, it's not sticky at all. It's very wet and moisturizing, and I love this. It looks so good on the lips. It looks clear on the lips because, of course, it's kind of almost lip-toned, but I love it, and I'm glad that I got it in an Ipsy bag and, you know, that I have it because I probably never would have discovered this otherwise. I've been using it a lot. Okay, so I have two concealer products. The first one is one that I owned a long time ago. I owned a little sample size of it. Um, I didn't like it. It was very dry and actually didn't feel like it did very a whole lot for me. And it didn't last very long. Like the tube of it itself dried up very quick and it just was not flattering on me. So the fact that I even went out of my way to purchase the full size is a little strange. I think because I've heard so many people rave about it. I was like, you know what? Let me just give this another try and buy the full size. And I'm so glad that I did. This is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. This has got to be the strangest concealer that I think I've ever come across. Because when you take it out, like the wand out of the tube, it's very dry. Like, really dry. The formula itself is really creamy. But it almost feels like you're not going to be able to get any more out like the next time you use it. Like, that's how dry it is. But I love this concealer. It doesn't look really heavy and cakey underneath my eyes. It doesn't accentuate the crease, or the creasing rather. It blends beautifully. It's not too crazy heavy, but it's definitely full coverage. It covers up all the darkness underneath my eyes. This is like holy grail status. And I bought it this year, and I've been using it literally every time I'm doing my concealer. So I love it so very much. Not a new product, obviously, but I wanted to share it with you guys nonetheless. And then the other concealer that I've really been enjoying is the Tarte Ultra Creamy um, Shape Tape Concealer. Again, this is like, I guess, the little, the cousin or the sister to the regular shape tape, but it's a creamier version. It's not mattifying. It definitely is moisturizing, and it blends a little easier. It's not as heavy. I would say this is more like medium to buildable full coverage because it's not quite as heavy as the original, but it is full coverage. Don't get it twisted, or it can be. Um, but it's just creamier, and I like that. I like that this is not as matte as the original because the original was very, very heavy. So if you liked the original, but you thought maybe it was a little too heavy, a little too matte, I feel like you would really love this one. So... What I've been liking to do is mixing this one in with my NARS, match made in heaven. <laughs> but I love that one. Okay, I only have a couple more products I'm going to share with you guys, and we're going to wrap this up. 
once and for all, because this has been this has been a very long video. Um, the next product that I'm going to share with you is actually a set of products. You know, I was going to film more videos after this, and I don't think I'm going to be able to. I am so hot, like and sweaty and sticky. I feel disgusting. Like you can you can see like the oils and the the sweat starting to peek through the skin. Okay, but this next set of products is actually something that I bought in a bigger set of products. I had got on the Beauty Creations website and I purchased a set of gel pot liners, regular gel eyeliners, and what else was it? The colored eye bases. But the true standouts of that larger collection is definitely the eyeliners, their stick eyeliners. Um, this is a whole range of colors. So I've got like everything in, in the rainbow here besides orange, I don't see orange. I feel like I might be missing a few, but anyway, I've got the whole range. They are such good eyeliners. They're very long wearing. They don't like wear off really quickly in your waterline. Um, I like to match these. This video is testing me all. <laughs> I've had the power go out, my camera cut off. I've had the battery dial me twice already. It's like it doesn't want me to finish this video for you guys. Anyhow, what was I saying about these pencils? They're amazing. They're long wearing. I love the fact that I have all these different colors that I can match up to different colorful eye looks. They are very inexpensive. I feel like I paid three bucks per pencil, which is like drugstore pricing. If you're in the market for good eyeliners and you want something colorful, check out Beauty Creations. They are phenomenal. Okay, this next product is an eyebrow pencil and I love this eyebrow pencil. I only wish it had more product in it because for the amount of money you're paying for it, you're getting very little product. This is the Huda Beauty Balm Brows. And the reason why I love this one so much is because the tip of this pencil, if I can get that to come into focus, is super, super tiny. So you can get really small hair strokes with this. Let's see if you guys can see that. See that? Barely see it? Okay. You can get very small hair strokes with this pencil and it's perfect for somebody like me that needs the hair strokes because I don't have any real eyebrow hair. Well, I have some, I don't have a lot. So I need something like this to fill in with. Um, just recently, Sephora had some sort of special on this pencil where if you bought two, you got them for 25. I think originally this pencil's like, what are they, $18 a piece, $17 a piece, so two for 25 was actually a really good deal, so I bought two. Um, but yeah, the only thing that really holds me back from buying this is the little bit of product that you get in here. You just don't get enough, so it doesn't last me very long, but I love the product itself, and I've gone through probably five of these since I've discovered it, so I wanted to share it with you guys. Last but not least of the products that I've discovered this year that I have fallen in love with is the Juvia's Place Eye Prep Eye Prime Eye Primer. Now, I'm a big fan of eye primer. Some people just like to use concealer. Some people don't use anything at all. Those people are not right. <laughs> they have issues. I love this eye primer. It does such a fantastic job, not only covering like any dis discoloration you might have on your lids, um, for me, the purple, the veins, just everything, it covers up all of that, but it just creates this really nice canvas for your eyeshadow. So I love this. Eyeshadows blend very easily over top of this. This kind of reminds me a lot of the Anastasia Beverly Hills eye primer. So if you're somebody that really enjoys that one, but maybe you're, you're not wanting to spend as much, buy the Juvia's Place because um, they're pretty similar. I would say about 90% similar if I had to put a percentage on it. I really love this. I've used it a whole hell of a lot and that's why I'm sharing it with you today. So again, that was a doozy of a video. This is probably gonna be like an hour long and if you stuck it out and waited around for the very end, oh, I love you so much. Thank you guys so much for being here, for watching the video to its entirety. I appreciate you guys. Again, if you made it this far through the video, but you're not yet subscribed and you enjoyed it, or you've been lurking a little bit, maybe enjoying some of my other videos, please be sure to hit that subscribe button, tap that notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.